Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Rebel Long Arms Australia. Um, today I've got a, an unboxing video uh, for the Segway Navimo. Uh, this particular unit is actually one of the, or is, from what I understand, the very first uh, Australian model actually in the country. Um, this is the, the actual machine that will be sold here in Australia. Uh, we'll ship across here just to do some testing uh, to make sure that everything works okay here before they uh, bring the shipment in later this year. Um, just very quickly on it, the way it's boxed, it's boxed really, really well, um, just like all the other robots. Uh, this one doesn't use foam though, it's all packed in cardboard, which is great, because it's uh, obviously much better uh, for recycling. Um, but I want to note to you that this box has had a significant damage done to it uh, during its, during its uh, shipping process. Um, you can see on this side here that this whole corner of the box has been pushed in, so it's been, it really has been dropped from a reasonable height at some point, uh, and it's done some really significant damage to the box, uh, but the robot itself is perfectly okay. So once we open up the robot, it really, because it's all packaged around, uh, and there's actually essentially this card here, this box here, which is where it's taken the, the brunt of all that, all that damage. Um, and the, the robot's about sort of, yeah, it's about 60 to 80 millimeters inside the box. So the packaging has really done a great job. So as much as I don't like to see damaged boxes when they turn up, um, I was very pleased to see that, yeah, that the amount of damage this box has actually incurred uh, during, during shipping. Um, that, that it's actually, uh, it really has come out really well and hasn't damaged anything inside the box whatsoever. So, yeah, so quickly, we'll just unbox it, show you exactly what's in the boxes. I'll give you a quick update of where we're at with the, uh, with the Segway Navimo. Um, so, yeah, as I said, um, the, the packaging of these guys, really, really good. Um, everything's wrapped in cardboard and, and sort of folded, and it, it's all really strong. Um, so there's another big, large car, um, cardboard section that comes out there. And the top of that is your quick start guide there, with just, just pure and simply a link. Uh, or a 2D matrix there, so you can actually download the app and, and get straight into it. Um, the Segway Navimos really are incredibly easy to set up. The software they've got uh, and the firmware in these machines now is really, really quite good. Put this on the side as we go. Okay, so inside there, there's also another guide here. So your, your manual, which again, they do call this a quick start guide, but it's got a lot more information uh, in there about the actual robot and how to set it up. Um, I'll just get that open so we have a quick look and show you. There's actually two in there. There's actually a important information which is to do with safety and warranty. Uh, and then a quick start guide for life without boundaries. They have a lovely slogan. Tells you what's in the box. All the parts are in the box. Quick, quick guide installer which has got that barcode again so you can download the app. Goes through and gives you a bit of an information about you know, setting up the uh, the RTK antenna and the, and the pros and cons, and we won't get into that today because I'm going to take a lot more, far more in depth videos on uh, on RTK reference stations or the antennas uh, to give you a lot more information about you know how you should set them up and you know properties that are suitable and not suitable for RTK based uh, robotic lawn models. And, uh, so it goes through the, just the basic setup of where to put everything, tells you about all the lights, how it flashes on the on the robot. Um, gives you a connection guide to show you how to guide and also gives you the connect the, um, the first setup on how to actually do your first map um, including your pathways and no-go zones um, and some quick programming and how and the buttons on the actual robot itself what the buttons mean what the lights mean when they're flashing um, how to put the how to put the pin code in and things like that so it is just a quick start guide again so but it's uh, it actually is a very good guide it actually really does give you all the information that you need uh, to get you going uh, safety warnings in the other catalogue here, go through blades, um, functionality of the robot, how to pick it up, it's got a big handle on the back so I think that's pretty self-explanatory, uh, how to change the battery, how to change the blade, maintenance, gives you information about the warranty, um, again a lot about warranty in here as well and again we'll get we'll get into all the warranties in Australia in, in, in another video so I can clearly outline what's, uh, what's covered and what's not, okay? So I'll just slide those back in there, bear with me for a second. I'll slide this other guy in there as well so we don't lose that later on down the track. Seal that back up again. The pouch actually completely reseals again, which is great. Okay, the robot. Now this particular machine has been, been in testing over in, uh, over in the manufacturer as well. So it's not a, it is not a brand new machine, this machine. Okay, so the robot comes out 
like such. This is the 1500 model, if I haven't mentioned that already. Uh, so it's the 1500 square metres. Um, comes with a protective film across the top there, so everything's really nice and neat. All the models in Australia are going to come with the vision fence uh, installed, so you can't buy the Segway in Australia without the vision fence on the top, okay? It obviously can be removed if you need it to be removed for, for whatever reason, but it comes with it in Australia, and at the moment, they're not necessarily sold as a spare part or a, uh, a, an accessory at the moment because every robot is going to come with them. Um, we'll get back to the robot in just two seconds. We'll get this box out of the way. Okay, so underneath the, uh, one, of the, one of the tabs there is the accessories kit. And the accessories kit has your pole, your RTK antenna, things like that in it. Okay, so put that there single screw, that's for actually for the RTK uh, antenna to actually fix the antenna to the pole. You get a bunch of spare blade, and I don't know how many there are in there. I think there might be six, possibly nine. Your RTK reference station or your antenna, uh, which are they're very, very small in a Segway Navimo, so they really are um, work perfectly fine. I've been testing Segway Navimo for two years now. These things really are great, great machines. Okay, the other side there we have little ground screws for screwing it down to the base station and an allen key for screwing those downs and there's also some velcro straps and the velcro straps are for just tying the, tying the wire down the pole uh, if needed. There is a bunch, about eight or ten uh, wire pegs uh, just for cleaning up you know, all your wiring and that around the back of the base station for the wiring for your power cable uh, or your RTK antenna cable. These little orange things, and I have no idea what they are. I have not seen these before, so I can only assume they've got something to do with the vision fence. I honestly will have to get back to you on that. They're little orange, almost like little pegs or little selectors. Very flexible. Possibly a magnet inside of them. They actually might be some kind of fence, but I, don't, I have not heard anything about those whatsoever. So they're news to me. We'll see how we'll work, we'll work that out, we'll work that out. Um, and then your, basically your trident fork uh, for screwing the, uh, for, for sticking the, um, the, the uh, RTK pole into the ground. And then on the back side here is the two sections of pole. So the Segway poles, they just slide together. Uh, they're very, 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 very simple and easy. There, there, there. You slide one into the other. One's got the little selector on the top there, so it is that side, that's right. Slide one into the other. There's a little hole on the side there for when the RTK uh, antenna slides on the top. There's a hole on the side there for putting the screw into the side there to fix that so it sits there quite loose without the screw. So you put the screw in there to keep it nice and tight. And the bottom just screws onto the trident, like such. And then you just poke that down to the ground. Okay, all very, very easy. So that's the accessories kit uh, on that side. Then there is also in here is the power supply. Now these two come with quite a decent power supply. Um, off the top of my head, I can't tell you the battery sizes. It's a 10 amp battery, amp hour battery in the larger, in the, in the 3000 square meter model. Um, I really can't, off the top of my head, give you the specs on the batteries, but they all drop down in size as they as they go down. Um, the power supply here is it's a 32 volt 2.5 amp. Now they don't run on a 32 volt battery, so the charge rate I don't couldn't tell you in these guys. So I again with the batteries, usually I'd have this on the top of my head, but I just don't right now. Um, so check out our website to uh, to find out the specs on the different sizes and the batteries and the charge rates. Um, the charging rate will be in and around that sort of one to one to three hour mark, depending on the size of the battery. I believe the power supply is the same on all on all models. I don't think that, I don't think it changes. Um, so the charge rate will be much quicker on the small machines, um, and on the large machine will be slower because it's got the 10 amp hour battery in it, and approximately I think it's around about three to four hour run time on the 3,000 square meter model. So and it'll all, they'll step down uh, incrementally from there uh, down for, for the other ones. Um, we then have 
base station there, I'll leave the base station there for a second. Um, the power extension cable. Now, segways are one of the ones that are a little bit annoying, I think, because I don't think you have an option to use. No, I lie, they are fine. So yeah, so the segways, again, you can you have an option to use the extension power cable. Um, if, if the power cable on, on the, uh, just straight out of the, out of the um, out of the power supply is long enough just to go straight into your, into your base station, then you can. If you need to extend the cable, then you get this cable, which is, again is eight to 10 meters uh, long. I'm not sure I'll have to measure that for you to get the exact length of that the antenna cable or that, sorry, that power cable. Okay, in the base station. Okay. You just drop that box to the side there. Base station for the Segway, um, all very simple. Um, Segway comes in and docks in there perfectly fine. It uses again a wire system on the back here. So there are wires installed in the base station here uh, that it uses to put a signal out into the robot so it can actually line itself up nice and straight and dock. Um, if it's on a really nice flat ground, uh, the Segway docks really, really well, pretty much first time every time. If it's not on perfect ground, it actually works itself out really, really well. Um, it'll come in, it'll work out that it's not aligned perfectly properly and it will reverse up, re, re, and straighten itself up again and go again. And it might do that two or three times if you've got the base station that's not perfectly flat, um, but it always docks. I've never have I ever seen the Segway in two years not dock properly, so they really do a great job. Um, in the back of the base station, there's just simple two plugs sticking at the back here, one's for your power and one's for your RTK antenna. So your RTK antenna, only comes with about two meters of cable it's just long enough to go from the base station up on top of the pole that's right beside it um, and of course you've got a hole on the side of the base station here where you can put that trident fork in here and that ends up standing up like such with your antenna on the top so it's really not very tall at all we're only talking about a meter here you can put this a bit further away obviously with the trident fork and stick it in the ground uh, but out of the box you only get the very short cable uh, on the rtk antenna and that rtk antenna must be plugged into the base station. You don't have an option to power the RTK antenna you know, separate to the base station because there are signal, there's, there's signals that actually go between the antenna and the base station that can't be broken. So that brings me to accessories. Now I'll have to put that there like such. I'll light these up a little bit. Move all this stuff over the side here. Yeah. The weight of the Segway is quite decent. Um, I don't have the top, off the top of my head again, but I think they're in that sort of 13 to 15 kilo mark. Um, that, that, that. I'm very curious about these orange things. I'm going to find out what the story is with that. I think they might have something to do with the vision, with the vision fence, uh, and possibly because the vision fence is colour driven, so it actually looks looks for differences in colours. Um, so I think possibly the orange there is something to actually tell the tell the uh, the robot not to go over. So it might be a, a basically almost like a a manual off limits type of arrangement so I'll have to get back to you on that one okay so the accessories for these guys that I don't have here in my head at the moment here there's not much coming in Australia at the moment well, there's not much really available from Tear Truth um, the there's covers that I think are being designed at the moment but they're not they're not available there's not even any really imagery out there to show you what they actually would look like for garage stations to go over the top uh, but if you do put a garage station over these guys, just think that it really must be plastic. So you want something that's a plastic cover that goes over the top. If you put a metal cover over the top of these guys, the, uh, the, uh, the, the GPS uh, reception is not going to work. Um, the blade kits are coming into Australia, no problems at all. So they got uh, spare blades coming in. The packs are, packs are 12 blades uh, and they'll be $29.95, yeah, $29.95 uh, recommended retail. Uh, they are bringing in the little temporary fence. Um, the temporary fence, Again, I'm really a bit unsure of exactly how that works. Only a little wide fence that you can put down uh, to, for the robot to go around. And again, I'm not sure if that's that was designed before the vision fence came out. So I think that's sort of more designed for the robot to actually bump into or to see it with its uh, with the ultrasonics that you could also get on it at the time. Um, so I'm not really quite sure how the vision how the temporary fence actually works now. I assume it works with the uh, with the with the vision now. Um, oh, sorry, and that temporary fence is going to be $69.95 uh, and I don't know the length of it. I, I actually just tried to look that up just, just before 
to work out what the actual length of that temporary fence kit is. Uh, I couldn't find any information to tell me what the, what the length is, so once we have them in our hands, I'll let you know. Uh, the antenna extension, or the, the, the remote mount extension pole, it's only a small pole, I do have one around here, I should have shown it to you. Um, a small pole that you can mount on the side of your house, on the side of your gutter, on the roof sort of thing. It's just a single pole, it's only about this long, um, and it's got a mount on the bottom that actually allows, I'll put a picture up here for you. Um, that allows you to remote mount the antenna up on your roof, whatever it might be. But that comes with its own little hassle, obviously, because the antenna cable uh, that I showed you before, um, is only about two meters long. So there is an accessory for an extension cable kit for this. Uh, the cable is only 10 meters long and I'm yet to find out whether you can actually extend it with more than one cable. I, I, I believe you might be able to get away with more than one cable, uh, but I'm going to find out and we'll have to test that as well to tell you exactly how that works and whether that's got any negative impact uh, on the robot signal. But the cable that you can get as an accessory is 10 meters long um, and it's $49.95 for the cable, um, and that'll allow you to get, you know, basically 12 metres away from the base station to mount your antenna. In most cases, that's going to be perfectly okay, um, but trying to get, particularly if you've got a, a spot where you want to put the end, put the base station on the other side of the yard, but the antenna needs to be on the other side of the yard and up high or something on the side of the house, then, uh, then 10 metres is, or 10, 10 to 12 metres is going to be uh, a bit of a limitation to try and uh, get these antennas mounted up high. So. I will uh, do some testing and I'll get back to you on whether, uh, whether we can actually use more than one uh, of those antenna extension cables uh, so we can actually get it further and further away. Uh, and again, um, as far as the positioning of these RTK um, or these uh, reference stations for the antennas, um, I'll do a, not a far more in-depth video on those uh, to let you know where they should be mounted and exactly how RTK actually works when it comes to utilising satellites uh, because understanding how the RTK works really gives you a good understanding of where the robot can and can't work in your yard and if you're having issues with it it sort of explains why you, why, why you can have issues in certain spots and give you the uh, information you need to be able to fix it. Um, the little antenna pole I was talking about before there for the remote mount it is going to be $99.95 uh, recommended retail in Australia um, for a very small little pole that mounts up on the top there but if you need it you need it. So, uh, there is only three models coming to Australia at this point in time. There's going to be the, the, uh, the 3,000 square metre model, which is the largest one, the 1,500 square metre, which is this one, uh, and the 800 square metre, which is the smallest one. Um, again, I'll put the specs up on the screen here of what the battery, battery sizes are and the charge rates and everything else, so you can see. Um, I just don't have it on, my, on hand right this moment. As I said, they all come with vision fence, uh, so they're all going to come with a vision fence on them. Um, the robot itself, so the, sorry, the, the three models, I'll get back to that, I'm getting a bit distracted, aren't I? Uh, the 3000 square metre model is going to be 3999 in Australia. The 1500 square metre model is going to be 349, no, 36, yes, sorry, it is 34, 3499, uh, and the 800 square metre model is going to be 2999 uh, as a retail price in Australia, and we'll have all those details on our website before long so you can uh, look at purchasing. Underneath the robot, I'll give you a quick idea. So again, with, with the robot itself, these handles are fantastic. You really, you really can pick them, pick them up really, really easily with the handle because um, they're not exactly the lightest machines. And I think they're around about that sort of 14, 14, 15 kilo mark. So they're, they're reasonably heavy machines. Um, it's slightly offset blade system on these guys. Um, it's not super offset, but it is slightly offset. So the, the, the edge of the blades are still sort of in that, you know, in that seven or eight centimeters away from the edge of the robot. Um, and when you're setting up an RTK robot, you really need this robot to be traveling sort of five or 10 centimeters away from the edge. You know, they recommend sort of 10, 15 centimeters. So um, five to 10 seems to work okay, as long as you're prepared to, to, uh, to accept that you, know, you could get some inaccuracies and fails at some times. Um, so yes, you, you're definitely gonna have some uncut grass on the edges. Uh, like I said, you've got about seven or eight centimeters on the side here now, plus another five centimeters there, about maybe even 10. So you could end up with 15, 15 to 20 centimeters of uncut grass um, around your boundaries. Uh, the Seagway Navamos do go around and do all the boundaries first. So all of the all the boundary area does a lap around the outside. It also does a lap around all your no-go areas and cleans up all the edges first, uh, and then comes in and starts mowing the lines uh, in the middle. Um, so like I said, offset blade, electronic blade height adjustment. Um, at the moment, that is not adjustable from area to area. 
but I do know that there is firmware coming hopefully in September, I believe. I hope maybe it might be in August, but I believe it's a September update um, that will have the robots being able to segregate areas and mow different areas at different times. Um, and another one that I haven't been able to get an answer on at the moment um, is the number of areas you can actually set up with the Segway Navimo. So I haven't seen anything to tell me one way or the other how many you can actually set up. Uh, I have been testing these things for a long time, so I should just go out and actually test it. So I might do that actually next week, uh, and we'll test how many areas we can actually uh, set up in the in the Segway Navimo, uh, as well as how many no-go zones and how many paths you can set up. But at the moment, it seems to be a, a significant amount. The, f the way the schedule works at the moment and the mowing uh, pattern in this guy at the moment is that you, once you start mowing it starts from one area and it works its way through all the areas until it's completely mowed. You can't, this, this point of time you can't mow a specific area at a specific time and then go back to the docking station and go mow no, no, another area at a different time. Um, but like I say in that September, August, September update that functionality is absolutely coming and I expect within that functionality that we'll end up with being able to cut um, you know, each area at different mowing heights if you've got different types of grasses. So that is absolutely coming. I know it for a fact it is coming, it's just a matter of when. Uh, and as soon as we've got that, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be doing some testing. We'll take some videos to show you exactly how that works. Um, again, you've got access to the battery to, to quick change the battery, so that's going to be a great idea. Um, you've got externally mounted front wheels again, so you can take the wheels out and replace them without having to open up the robot. The wheels themselves on, the, on these segways are really, really good. Um, you can see that one there, but I'm not sure you can see that spinning. Uh, but the bearing wheels in the front are fantastic. They've got good clearance, they've got good strength. And ironically, these guys stepping up onto a small ledge, so if you've got to step up onto the grass, or you know, the grass is you know, 50 millimetres taller than the, than the path or something, um, these guys actually do a better job than even something like the, uh, the, the four wheel drive Luber machines. Uh, that tend to bottom out and belly out in the middle. So these Segways, as much as they're only a two-wheel drive machine, they are absolutely fantastic at traversing and getting to places. The one thing they haven't been great at is reversing on slopes, and that's because there's a lot of weight in the front of the robot and not so much in the back. Um, so once they're heading down a hill, if they've got to turn and reverse up a hill, um, they're not very good at that at this point in time. They, they keep changing the firmware to try and get around it, um, and they're doing much better. I watched my work. I've got one of these in my front yard right now. Um, I watched it the other day on like 25% slope on my front yard. Uh, maybe 25, 25 to 30% slope on the front yard. Um, and it no longer actually tries to reverse uphill. So it senses when it's actually on a hill uh, with, its, with its IMU in there and its, it's, it's um, gyro. If it knows that it's pointing downhill, let's go track it again. If it knows that it's pointing downhill, um, then it actually, instead of trying to reverse up the hill, it actually sort of drives around in a circle and comes back around and gets back to back to the area. So they're really doing a great job with the firmware and these guys, um, you know, trying to kind of combat, you know, essentially issues that's really related to the to the physical build of the robot, which is the weight distribution. But they're a two-wheel drive robot, so you can't expect too much when it comes to reversing uphill. There's almost no robot in this room behind me here at all uh, that reverses up hills very, very well at all. So mo most of the tool drive robots really do struggle to reverse uphill. So it's not something that's really isolated to Segway, but they are working on firmware all the time and they really do a good job of, uh, of, yeah, of basically programming their way around physical obstacles. So really, really good. Um, Segway as a company, they obviously they, they do a really, really good job. They've got a very lot, a lot of very intelligent people working for them, um, and the, you know, programming this sort of thing is really it's, it's in their nature. That's sort of what they do. So um, there's only one thing that we've sort of come across where, with these guys um, is that this little plastic strip around the side here. For some reason, it tends to start coming away at some point. Um, hopefully, it, hopefully it sort of gets fixed as, as time goes on. I think to tell the truth. I think this bump is actually different. There's a, uh, there's a 3000 over there. I think this bump has actually changed. It's not quite the same as it was before. So it may not have that issue anymore, but this, there was, we had a few cases where there's a little small piece of yellow, orange plastic there was sort of just coming away from the, from the bottom there. Um, it doesn't hurt the robot whatsoever. It doesn't change anything about the robot. Um, but it looks like they actually have changed it. It's actually not the same anymore. So they've already, already fixed that. And, um, the spinning disc blades on these guys, just like any other blade, uh, they really are. The blades on these guys are much thinner, um, so you will find that you'll go through your blades a bit quicker uh, on the Segway Navimo, but because they are really, really thin blades, 
they don't necessarily need to be that sharp. Um, even when they're even when they're dull, they still cut the grass really quite well without any problems at all. Um, what else can I tell you at the moment uh, that you wouldn't already know? Um, I already spoke about the app. The app, the app really is fantastic in regards to how it steps you through. Um, it does force you to watch videos on how to set it up when you're going through the app, when, through the app for the first time, which yeah, it's a little bit annoying sometimes. But you know, it uh, really does help people to make sure they do they do understand what they're doing before they do it. Once you've mapped it first, the, uh, once it doesn't force you to watch those videos again. It still puts them up, but it allows you to go past them. Um, rain sensor on the front of the robot, again, like everything else, it will go home in the rain, no problems at all. There's a really good light sequence uh, on the robot and the, and the base station and the RT, excuse me, and the RTK antenna. Um, uh, that really gives you a good indication of what the robot's thinking, uh, so it can sort of communicate to you with its, with its lights. Um, even when you're program when you're mapping this guy out, um, the light around the uh, around the center here, it basically tells you how good the GPS signal via the lights as it's driving around. It's very very helpful. It's very intuitive. It does a great job. Um, the notifications on the app seem to be really good. So everything comes through, no problems at all. Um, yeah, as far as the app sort of functionality goes, they seem to be better than most of the other uh, most of the other uh, wireless robot companies out there at the moment. Um, possibly with the exception of EcoFlow, which I haven't tested. Uh, sorry, not EcoFlow, EcoVax that I haven't tested yet, because um, their app is obviously very mature. So hopefully that will show that uh, that will show when we're testing that robot. Um, but now the app on this guy really, really, really good um, the connectivity on these guys. So they've all got connectivity across the board so they've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and 4G. Now honestly in my personal opinion I think all robots should have exactly that uh, because you need the Bluetooth connection if, you, if you've got something wrong with your, with your, with your connections uh, so you can actually connect to the robot to update you know, network settings or whatever it might be. Um, the Wi-Fi basically enables it not to use the 4G all the time so while it's using Wi-Fi that's perfectly fine uh, and if the Wi-Fi is available uh, in all areas then the robot doesn't necessarily need to use its 4G, only in the event that it possibly gets taken from your property, or whatever it might be, and then the 4G will obviously will give you notifications back so that you can track the robot and identify where it is. Now, I really think that all robots really should have all three systems, they really should. Um, in hub mode on these guys, um, actually that brings me on one point actually, uh, during testing that is that while these guys are pointing down a hill, if they go into fault, the hub motors free up and the robot tends to roll down the hill. Um, I know there's a lot of questions about that on some forums around, so I am very much hoping that that, uh, that sort of gets rectified in, uh, in firmware to come, so that when the robot does go into fault, it does stay locked and stays in its position. Um, the issue with that is eventually the robot is going to turn off. Once the robot turns off, these wheels will free work, will, will free wheel. Uh, and if it is on a slope, it will roll down the hill uh, and hit or go into anything else that's in its way. So that's just the nature of hub wheels, unfortunately, is that they can't be locked when there's no power on them. I think that's about it, guys. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, if you have any questions about, obviously, the Segway Navi modes or any other robot mower on the market or in Australia, uh, we've generally got our finger on the pulse on just about everything. So if you need to get in contact with us, by all means, send us an email at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can check out a lot of information on our website at www.rabbitlawnmowers.com.au uh, and you can check us out on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, those sorts of things. Just search for Rabbit Lawnmowers Australia. Thanks for watching.